Hi friends, I just wanted to pop here in here and say that this is a this is a heavy one. Um I talk a lot about my depression and my anxiety and all of all of it. And I want to just give that little warning um before you go in. If you are not in the place to listen to this um or watch this I completely understand. I always want you guys to be taking care of yourself first and foremost. So if you decide to click off this video, I I love you so much. I completely understand and I'll um I'll catch you in my next one. Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another weekly vlog. I talked last week about not being in the best mood, not being in the best mental space, and that really hasn't changed. <laughs> it's Monday, uh, and I finished that vlog on Saturday, and it really, yeah, hasn't improved all that much. Something that I always really enjoy doing is filming, regardless of what mood I'm in, usually. So I'm gonna do that. We're gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about the books that I'm reading and I'm gonna film a video a sit down video weird for me um later on in the week and we're just gonna live we're just gonna exist we're just gonna have one of those weeks where we barely get by but we get by and we celebrate it so I'm desperate to find something that I just can consume that will just like take over my mind and that I want to sit down and just blow through. My partner is working this weekend and depending on how I'm feeling I may or may not stream but I am alone for a lot of this week because my partner this is his long week and so a lot of time by myself sitting in the bed um, mindlessly watching stuff is not good so I kind of want to find something to just read and read and read and read and then continue to just read and read and read. I need something. That's that. That's that's my intro. I knew if I didn't start it now, I never would. Realistically, I'm gonna go back to laying in this bed like I have been doing for the past four days uh, until my partner gets home. And then we're gonna have some veggie chili with some cornbread. And we're gonna watch this cooking competition show that we started recently. And then yeah i'm gonna wake up tomorrow and do it all over again i'm thinking tomorrow i'll film my video we'll see um but that's it that's that's the intro i'm gonna go back to rotting in bed <laughs> as rough as i look is as rough as i feel i have just been fully submitting to the brain rot to be honest i it's tuesday um and I did go on a walk and do some lifting when I got home from work today um, and I started Maxton Hall which I'm into the second episode I think it's gonna be like my walking show to like motivate me to walk because I'm into it it's like a high school bully romance situation which we know is like my shit so I'm liking it but I fully haven't been doing anything. I've been watching YouTube and that's it. Like I did very minimal reading and I haven't left this spot except to go to work. So I'm okay. Um, I just feel very disconnected and I... I don't know like tomorrow I have my first psychiatry appointment and then I also have therapy on Friday um but I yeah I just I, I feel like completely disconnected from everything and I have just been existing as a person and it's upsetting because this is this was a very common thing pre-therapy and like a couple months into therapy but I have been in therapy for a while now and I feel like I've just regressed and I know that like this is not a linear process but it's upsetting 
to feel like I have all of these coping mechanisms and I have all of these things that I have learned in therapy and I've done all of this unpacking and I still am struggling the same way that I was and it just doesn't feel good it just it's 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 a bitch quite frankly it's yeah I'm just ready I, part of it is like this is something that I could deal with for the rest of my life and that's really disappointing that's really upsetting that I could have to feel like this forever and at what point do I just accept that? Like, at what point do I just accept that I'm gonna completely dissociate from my life and there's nothing that I can do? And, like, what does that look like? And what does that look like for my life? Like, if I am trying to live my life and I'm out traveling or I'm out doing these things and I just have these complete mental breaks what does that mean like yeah I I just I don't know I am I'm struggling and I, I felt good earlier about getting on my walking pad doing my walk and doing my weights and I need to like incorporate that in my routine and like make it a part of my routine because I enjoy it so much not even necessarily like exercising just the result of it is a great feeling i used to run all the time because i loved the after feeling of running of like the legs just being so exhausted and like all of that and i find myself falling into these very negative thought spirals when i'm feeling insecure and when i I'm feeling like I don't like the body that I'm in and I wish that I was raised with different mindsets around self-discipline and respecting myself and I think I have a very interest-based nervous system and so I tend to not think and do the important things. I tend to think and do the things that I love. Um, and so I wish that that was something that I was raised to love. And it just wasn't. It was always something that had a very negative space in my mind. And my camera battery is going to die. So I did feel good doing all of that um and now I'm just like back to rotting and I I don't want to say rotting in a negative space um like I'm not looking down on myself for doing that it just I wish it wasn't like this so yeah hi friends <laughs> it's um it's Friday it's been quite a many days since I've talked to you and I think I just, I just, I'm just gonna talk and get out my thoughts. I have, I do have some notes, just some bullet points of things that I want to talk about, but mostly I'm just gonna ramble. I have been not doing very well. As I mentioned in the other two clips and last week, I have been struggling really hard with, um, depression mostly and I forgot what it was like when it's bad because I haven't had a PMDD episode like this since January. My PMDD for reference is just worse in the winter. Uh, I think everybody's mental health is just worse in the winter but so once the winter once the sunlight started coming in and spring hit, I was feeling much better and I had good episodes back to back. I then had, after my surgery and my next one on switch out, I had a month and a half long period. It recently just ended and I was hoping that that meant that I would have a little bit of a reprieve, but that's not the case. It's actually come back even worse. I haven't had my period yet, obviously, but the the PMDD episode is definitely pretty bad. 
Um, but I wanted to kind of talk about it because with episodes like this, there comes a lot of emotions. And I was originally going to film this clip yesterday, and I'm glad that I waited until after my therapy appointment to talk about all of this because I'm definitely more grounded. I guess we can start with, like, a frame of reference. So, last week I mentioned in my video that I had been trying on some clothes and it had sparked a little bit of insecurity in me. And I was struggling a little bit with the way that I look. I am a body neutral person when it comes to myself. And so, when I am feeling insecure, that's very hard for me to deal with because I live very much above the neck. I am a very cerebral person. I intellectualize everything and so it's hard for me to... Okay, I had to turn the light on because my, my, my autofocus was struggling to focus. But So it's hard for me to identify when things are going on with body feelings and so noticing my body and being present in my body in that way is very weird for me. It's not usual. And that sort of spiraled and I realized that I was in an episode. It's very much one of those things that if you have a regular period, you can track it. It's usually happening the same time every time, but because of the irregularities with my period, it is hard to tell. And it's one of those things that I don't realize that it's happening sometimes until it's over, but sometimes when I'm in it. And so I have been feeling incredibly disconnected from myself, un unable to identify how I've been feeling, and I haven't been able to connect with anything in a meaningful way. I haven't been able to read. I haven't been able to play video games. All I've been doing is sitting in this bed and watching court cases and like other YouTube videos and just sort of existing and... Then I had a appointment with my new psychiatrist, and it was hard. Um, it wasn't what I thought it was, and then I just proceeded to have a complete and utter meltdown yesterday, and it was incredibly emotional. And just being entirely honest with you, I considered checking myself in somewhere, and that is not something that I've dealt with since winter. And when I have those moments where I'm like, if I don't do something, I'm going to hurt myself, I, it's very scary. And it's very hard to get yourself out of those cycles. Um, but I was able to, through conversations with my partner um, and through kind of getting outside of myself, I was able to bring myself back down. And then I had a therapy appointment today, which I'm very, very grateful for. I really, really needed it. It was a chance for me to talk about what I was feeling and give words to what I was feeling. And so I guess we can just get right into my talking points. So I started therapy eight months ago and one of the things that, the way that my therapist works is we work with things that pop up throughout the week. So she's not the sort of therapist that will get really deep into a traumatic event in your past unless it's presenting itself in your present. So if I have a day where I'm just feeling very angry, she works to figure out what happened that week and that day and what the root of that anger might be. And it can start with something surface level like, hey, this happened. And then we identify where that stems back from and what triggered that feeling, that overwhelming feeling. She is not someone who's going to be like, okay, well, in today's session, we're going to talk about all of your childhood traumas just completely unprovoked. And so I would come into each session, I do weekly sessions, um, come into each session and say like, hey, this thing popped up, let's talk about it, and then we would come up with a resolution or a coping mechanism for how I dealt, should deal with the situation going forward. And so I've been in therapy eight months, I go every single week, and I thought that I had 
the coping mechanisms in place to deal with the things that I previously was dealing with in very unhealthy ways. And so when I had this complete meltdown, it was, it felt like a negation of all of the work that I had done and I felt like I had regressed so much. And it's a really hard feeling Um, and I... I was reassured by my best friend, Tamika, and my partner, and my therapist, like, this is part of the process, and you're doing well, and all of that kind of stuff, but it can be very hard to feel like you're regressing, and it's equally hard when it's, when it involves hurting other people, and so you have that that shame, that guilt of like, why can't I get this right? Why am I hurting the people that I love? And what is wrong with me? And those thoughts are things that I dealt with all the time before therapy. And we have steadily worked through those in therapy since, but I don't I still have those moments of like, well, I just melt, I just had a complete meltdown or like, I don't have the capacity to talk to this person for weeks on end. So like, I'm a terrible friend. I'm a terrible person. I only hurt the people that I love. I still have those thoughts and it's not necessarily about ending those thoughts because they're coming from a part of myself that isn't bad, but is coming from a good place but doesn't know how to phrase what it's trying to phrase. It's not, it doesn't know how to accomplish what it wants to in a healthy way. And that's a big part of my therapy process so far has been taking the bad parts, taking the parts that I have thought badly of and thought that they were hurting me um, and really kind of changing the way that I think about those parts and and it's the the theory of no bad parts and as I have gone through therapy I have realized that there was a part of me this depressed part this anxious part that has always felt like all of me and I had this identity crisis in therapy as I realized that I was getting better and I did have these these tools in place to help me, I felt like I didn't know who I was because I've always been depressed. I've always been anxious. I've always had these mental health issues my whole life as long as I can remember. And so being without those, like, what does that look like? What is, what, what is, who is Ashley? Who am I with these new coping mechanisms and these new ways of thinking? Like, who am I? And it was very important for me to realize that that wasn't all of me. That was just the most prominent part. That was the part that was hurting the most. And so it felt like all of me. And that really helped me realize that even if I never, if I, even if I go a single day not being depressed anymore, even if I'm depressed for the rest of my life, that is not me. That is not my whole identity. That is not Ashley. I still have my core values and my core beliefs and my depression does not make me who I am. It is a part of me. It is not a bad part of me and it is not all of me. And these are things that are really, really hard to work through when you are in it. When you're in the trenches, it's hard not to completely lose your identity and who you feel like you are and what you love to do. It's hard not to feel like you've lost all of those when you're in it. And it's also hard to verbalize that. It's hard to say, I am not who I want to be. I don't feel how I want to feel. And when it's something like, when it's something that's so out of your control, like PMDD and hormones and all of that is, it's very hard to reckon that with feelings of wanting to be in control, with feelings of like, this is my life, this is, this is, I want to be making decisions for myself, I don't want this other thing controlling me and determining how I react and whether I can get out of bed every day, like, it's very hard to reckon 
that with the out of controlness that mental health mental illness brings and it's hard to listen to yourself because it's not like this is a separate being that is controlling you this is you this is your brain giving you signals that something is not right that you need to listen that you need to pay attention and it's hard to have something controlling you so wholly it's hard to not resent it it's hard to not want it gone and accept it's hard to accept that this thing might be with you for the rest of your life and there's nothing you can do except try to make it through and to listen to what your brain what your what signals you you're getting from your body and your brain So basically, all of that is to say that I am eight months in and I feel a lot stronger than I was and I am also realizing that I am not okay and all of the shit that has been untangled um, in the last eight months is uncovering other shit that was buried beneath the shit and I don't just because I have other coping mechanisms and I feel ready, more ready to take on these bad situations or these negative feelings or whatever doesn't mean that I can't also have bad days. It doesn't mean that I can't also lay in bed (laughs) for a week and struggle because I, I don't, need to be strong all the time just because I'm stronger in other areas. The hardest, I think, I think, think, I think the hardest thing for me is that I was getting to a point where I was considering what life after depression would look like. Like, my depression and my CPTSD has fully formed me, has fully formed my thoughts and It is such an integral part of who I am. It is not all of who I am, but it has influenced so much in my life that I don't know what life looks like without it. And so to already be having those thoughts, to to be having those thoughts after coming such a long way, it's hard to then feel really set back um, and feel like, well, this is never going to end. And that's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm getting like completely off track because my thoughts are just everywhere. Um, but mostly I I wanted to talk about like what therapy has done for me and the fact that it's done a ton, but it's not, I'm not done with therapy. I'm not done. And... I am going to struggle, I'm still struggling, and I want to be as open about that as I can be. There are a lot of things that I am dealing with that I don't feel comfortable talking about, but but I don't want to hide how I'm feeling. So even if I'm not talking about the things that I'm working through, I still want to relay how I'm feeling and what this experience is like emotionally. And I want to talk about the fact that I am doing better and I want to talk about the fact that sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm, I, I'm good. Sometimes I'm okay. And then other times I'm not okay. And then it's not like I'm all just going to be okay. Like it's not like every single day is just going to be okay. And that's really hard. It's a really hard thing to accept that, like, you feel okay and then one day you could just not. And, yeah. So, going forward, thinking about, like, what does this mean for my life? Like, what if I never am okay? What if I never feel better? So, I just want to be transparent and honest and open about where I'm at. And I hope that this has helped 
someone in some way. I know that everybody's mental health is different and I just want to say that if you are able, I recognize the privilege of being able to go to therapy and I would urge anybody who is able to go. It is a process. It's hard to find someone that you feel comfortable with and I have been in and out of therapy my whole life. I have seen many, many people that did not work and it can be very discouraging, but when you find someone that works, it really works and it's so important and it's so worth it. And I wish that I could give everybody the experience in therapy that I am currently having and I just urge you to never stop trying to find that, to never stop respecting yourself, to never stop seeking out the things that you need. And I don't want you to think that just because you have a bad day, it doesn't mean that you'll never have a good day again. That's not, that's your, that's your depression or your anxiety or whatever. That's, that's it lying to you because just like there are bad days, there are good days and that's life. Like that sounds so lame, but that is, that's it. So I hope that you guys found something from this video and I know that it's hard. Um, it's hard stuff. It's hard to deal with. It's hard to listen to. It's hard to think about. It's easier to just ignore it. Um, but I don't want you to. So, I hope you guys got something from this. And I will do... I'll feel better. I will have better days. I will get past this. And you will get past it. And it's not the end. So... I really love you guys. I applaud anybody who is struggling and gets up every day and and lives. Whether that's just laying in your bed and breathing. <laughs> I applaud you. If you get up and you do one thing today, I am so proud of you. If you got up and brushed your teeth or took a shower or made yourself a meal, I am incredibly proud of you. Even if it feels like nobody is proud of you, I want you to know that I am. And I want you to have every opportunity and every support and all of the love that you deserve. So, thanks for watching.